One other skill that's beneficial to have is to be able to determine the midpoint of two points on the Cartesian coordinate plane, or where the middle point would be, which would divide a segment into two equal pieces. Well, if I want to find the middle of a segment that has a length of 12, well, if the segment has a total overall length of 12, that means if this point is in the middle, each one of those segments is going to have the length of 6. Same thing as if I had a vertical segment that had the length of 10. Well, if I wanted to find the middle of that segment and found it, then each one of these segments would have the length of 5. What's neat is that if I were to draw a diagonal segment from, let's say, there to there, where this distance between here and here is 12, and the distance between here and here is 10, the way you can find the middle of that diagonal segment is find the middle of the horizontal component and the middle of the vertical component, and you would actually divide that segment into two pieces. Well, it's kind of easy if you just have what the actual lengths are, and then you can figure out those numbers. Well, what happens if you don't have the lengths and you just have the coordinates of the endpoints? Well, let's just think if I was working on a ruler. If I want to measure this line segment using a ruler, and the number 2 was there on the ruler, and the number 12 was right here on the ruler, well, what is the middle number between those two points? Well, the way you're going to find the middle number between two points is it's actually to find the average of those two numbers. And the average of 2 and 12 would be 7. And the way we found that was we took 2 plus 12 and divided that answer by 2, which is 14 over 2. And we're going to do the exact same thing to find the middle of a coordinate of uh, the middle coordinate of a set of points. And what I'm going to write down is that the x of the midpoint comma the y of the midpoint is actually equal to the average of the x-coordinates. So that would be x1 plus x2 over 2. And then the average of the y-coordinates, y1 plus y2 over 2. So this is the midpoint formula. Notice that if you use the midpoint formula, you get an x-coordinate, which is a number, and the y-coordinate, which is a number. So to do some examples, I'm going to do problem number 31 on page 58. I want to know where the midpoint is between the points 1, 1 and the point 9, 7. So just like when I want to find the distance in between two points, what I do is I write down the coordinates if I want to find the midpoint. So the, the two points I have are 1, 1 and 9, comma 7. And I'm just going to use this formula. Okay? So my midpoint is going to be at the average of these two numbers. 1 plus 9 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 1 plus 7 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Another example would be problem 33 on page 58. I want to find the midpoint of negative 1, 2 and 5, 4. Again, I write down my coordinates, negative 1, 2. 5, 4, and I'm going to do the math. So my midpoint is at, add these up. Well, negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. The next two examples I'm going to do is if they give you an endpoint and a midpoint, I need to be able to find the other endpoint. So I'm just going to draw a couple points up here and show you how, what my thought process is. If they tell me that this point, 1, 4, is an endpoint, and then they tell me that the point 3, 0 is a midpoint, well, I need to find the other point that's down here in this area that's the other endpoint. And the thought process I use, well, for... To go from this point to this point, I went down 1, 2, 3, 4. 
And then I went to the right, one, two. So to get over here, I'm going to go down four more. One, two, three, four, and I'm going to go right two. And this is my other point. And that is at the point five, comma, negative four. So the way I do it when I am just given the points of numbers is I actually set it up the same way. I'm going to do problem 48 on page 59. They give me an endpoint, which is at 1, comma, negative 2. They give me a midpoint, which is at 4, comma, negative 1. And I want to find the other endpoint. Well, what I ask myself is, what did I have to add or subtract to get from 1 to 4? Well, to go from 1 to 4, I added 3. So to get to my other endpoint, I have to add 3 more, which gives me the number 7. To go from negative 2 to negative 1, I subtracted 1. So to get to my endpoint, I'm going to have to subtract 1 more. Negative 1, actually I added 1. Go from negative 2 to negative 1, I added 1. So I'm going to have to add 1 more. So the endpoint for that one would be at 7, 0. The next example is they give you an endpoint at the point 5 comma 11. They tell you that the midpoint is at 2 comma negative 4. So again, it's just simple reasoning. To go from negative 5 to 2, you add 7. So I'm going to add 7 more. And to go from 11 to negative 4, I subtracted 15. So to get to my endpoint, I'm going to have to subtract 15 more which would give me negative 19. All is well and good if they give you the endpoints and they give you the midpoints. However, a lot of times you're going to want to use it in context to other problems. For example, if I tell you you have a circle whose diameter is in points on the diameter at 2 comma 0 and 8 comma 8, the type of questions you want to be able to answer are where is the center of the circle? and how long is the radius. So let's find the center of the circle. The center of the circle has endpoints at 2 comma 0 and 8 comma 8. Well, the center of the circle is at the midpoint of the diameter. So the midpoint is equal to the center. And I add these up. 2 plus 4 is 8. Uh, to, wrong. 2 plus 8 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 0 plus 8 is 8, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So the coordinates of the center of the circle would be at the point 5, 4. The other part of the question is, hey, I need the length of the radius. Well, the length of the radius is the distance from the center to one of the two points that are on the diameter. So I'm going to pick either one of those two points, and I'm going to find the distance using the same method that I did during our distance video. So I'm going to write down 8, 8. And I go through my process, thought process. The distance between 5 and 3 is 3. The distance between 4 and 8 is 4. So I square both of those and take the square root. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. So that's how you can use the midpoint formula combined with the distance formula to start answering real-world type applications.